Your body does something amazing to repair and protect itself. It's a process called autophagy, and it's constantly patrolling and hunting down dangerous damaged cells like precancerous cells before they have a chance to turn into cancer. Now, your body's always doing some level of autophagy, but when you fast, that process kicks into overdrive. And that's why so many people automatically link fasting to autophagy. And you would think that ramping up autophagy through fasting would be a good thing, right? But everywhere you look online right now, people are saying fasting is dangerous if you already have cancer. That autophagy can backfire and actually make cancer cells stronger. So if you're a cancer survivor or you're doing everything you can to prevent it, I mean, cue the panic. Just when you thought you were doing something great for your health by fasting, now you're scared for your life. So before you panic, let's clear this up because this is one of the most misunderstood parts of fasting. Today we're getting into whether autophagy kills cancer cells or helps them grow. I've read dozens of research papers on this from places like Harvard, MD Anderson, and trust me, there's a lot more to this story than the YouTube headlines make it sound. Here's what we know for sure. Every single day, tens of thousands of mistakes happen in your DNA, like little typos in your genetic code. Each one of those could turn into cancer, but because of autophagy, most of them never do. Your body clears them out before they can cause trouble. So when it comes to cancer prevention, autophagy is one of the most powerful tools we have. But what happens when we already have cancer? That's when the confusion starts. Because cancer is smart and it's sneaky. And some researchers are saying that cancer cells can use autophagy to survive. But how true is this? Well, in some lab studies, scientists have seen certain types of cancer cells, like pancreatic or lung cancer cells, try to use autophagy to survive stressful situations, like when they're starved of nutrients or when they're hit with chemotherapy drugs. They basically go into survival mode. But here's the thing. In a Petri dish, yeah, cancer cells can certainly do funny things that they don't do in your body and live longer in there, but your body is not a Petri dish. In a real human, there's hormones, immune cells, inflammation signals, oxygen flow, ketones, and repair mechanisms all happening at once. It's a full ecosystem, so autophagy doesn't act alone. When you fast, you're not just flipping autophagy on. You're triggering a whole body metabolic shift that that makes you stronger and makes cancer cells a lot weaker. Fasting lowers your inflammation levels, it reverses insulin resistance, and it strengthens your immune system. All the things that make your body a place where cancer cells don't want to live. Even if you fast for 16 to 24 hours, your body starts making a bunch of changes. First, your levels of something called IGF-1 start to drop, and that's huge because IGF-1 is a hormone that cancer cells love. It tells them to grow, 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 so lowering it is like pulling a plug on their power source. Next, when you're fasting, your blood sugar drops. And since most cancer cells rely almost entirely on sugar for energy, that hits them where it hurts too. And when you enter the fat burning zone, your body starts to produce ketones. It's a clean fuel source that your healthy cells can use for energy, but most cancer cells can't. Cancer cells may be dangerous, but they're quite fragile. They grow fast, mutate quickly, and don't follow the rules. And because of that, they're not very adaptable. When you take away their favorite fuel source, sugar, and you lower the growth signals and flood your system with ketones and immune cells, they can't handle it. And that's why researchers like Dr. Walter Longo are studying how fasting can make cancer treatments more effective. Because fasting puts cancer cells at a disadvantage, while it makes your healthy cells more resilient. So if you hear people saying fasting can feed cancer cells, that's not what the research shows in real humans. Fasting is not the enemy. And I mean, fasting's not the only way to ramp up autophagy. It's influenced by your entire lifestyle. When you exercise, when you get a good night's sleep, and even when you snack less and eat less between meals, that can also enhance autophagy because it gives your body time to repair itself when it's not busy using all of its energy to digest food. Or when you start eating an anti-inflammatory diet, like when you cut out white bread or white pasta, that also supports autophagy naturally. Now here's where things get really exciting. Scientists are actually learning how to use autophagy to outsmart cancer. They're feeding cancer patients on chemotherapy, a fasting mimicking diet, and learning how this can make cancer cells more sensitive to treatment while making your healthy cells more resilient. And this means you'll get less nasty side effects from chemo as well. This is the future of metabolic therapy. 
not just fighting cancer with drugs, but with your body's own built-in intelligence. For example, fasting activates something called differential stress resistance. Basically, your healthy cells go into survival mode during a fast. They slow down, they repair themselves, and they protect what matters. Cancer cells can't do that. They just keep growing even when it's dangerous. So when chemo hits and you're fasting, your healthy cells are more shielded, but the cancer cells are like deers in headlights. And this isn't just theory. In a human study, patients who fasted before and after having chemo had less fatigue, less nausea, and fewer mouth sores. And they handled the treatments better overall. And most of them only fasted for 24 to 48 hours. That's not a huge commitment, but the payoff was significant. Now, I'm certainly not saying that all cancer patients should fast their way through cancer treatment, especially not without medical supervision. But if you're a cancer survivor, you don't need to be afraid of fasting. You need to understand it, use it wisely, work with a doctor if you can, but don't let fear hold you back. Because if you can do it safely, fasting can be one of the most powerful tools you have to keep your cancer from ever coming back. So what can you do if you really want to make sure that you're safely activating autophagy without giving cancer cells an advantage? You can enhance autophagy safely through short controlled fasts paired with a low carb diet. As we know, cancer cells thrive in an environment flooded with sugar and insulin. It's exactly what they want. But when you fast and your blood sugar and insulin levels drop, most cancer cells will start to panic. They'll lose their main source of fuel and their ability to multiply quickly. Not only that, when your insulin levels are low, autophagy becomes more selective, meaning your body targets the damage and dysfunctional cells first. Your body knows which to get rid of and which to protect. That's why strategies like intermittent fasting and low carb diets show so much promise in cancer prevention and recovery. They create a metabolic environment where cancer cells struggle to survive, but healthy cells thrive. So to use autophagy to your advantage, get rid of the signals that cancer cells love. High insulin, high sugar, chronic inflammation. Speaking of chronic inflammation, autophagy works best in low inflammatory environments. And if your inflammation levels are high, just from years of stress, eating processed foods, refined carbs, sugar, even poor sleep and carrying extra belly fat, this inflammation really changes the environment inside of you. So if you want to get the most out of fasting and make autophagy work better, lowering inflammation is key. And the good news is you have full control over this. Even small efforts, like when you cut the sugar out of your coffee, or you switch to whole grains instead of eating white bread, and you get a solid night's sleep, and you better manage stress, these all add up and help to get rid of inflammation. Fasting absolutely works best when it's paired with lifestyle habits that keep inflammation down. It allows autophagy to be the secret weapon it's meant to be. And that's the whole idea around metabolic healing. You're not starving your body, you're giving it the time and space and means to heal itself. So if you have cancer or you're afraid of having it come back, I get it. It's so overwhelming hearing all these different opinions online. Like fasting is the best, but autophagy might help cancer grow. It can feel like you're stuck between two bad choices. I mean, fasting isn't magic and it's not for everyone. And it's definitely something you need to talk to your doctor about if you're on cancer treatment. But the research is incredibly promising. I hope this brought you a bit of clarity. You're not alone in this. You do have options and I'm here to help you find them. Like in this video where I talk about how to lower inflammation for good without fasting. I'll see you there.